They say big bucks need big wild country. Sometimes I think I need it just as much as they do. We're trying to make a sneak on this deer that we spotted from 50 miles up the hill. We're about 200 yards from where we last saw them. We think we know where he is. We're gonna try and get up above him, swing down on top. As the wind cooperates, we'll be able to do that, I think. This year, my brother Curtis and I set a goal for ourselves of finding remote, high country habitat where big mule deer bucks lead solitary and undisturbed lives. Somewhere rugged, steep, and hard to access. A place where we can hunt them on their terms. This year, the winter snows were replaced by mosquitoes in June, but that didn't keep me from heading out on my first scouting trip of the year. validating to see this three nice bucks in the first morning kind of validates all the time I've spent maps and Google Earth and research I think my passion for hunting in the backcountry really came from not wanting to see other hunters the more I started hunting farther away from roads and motorized trails, the more I realized that the best places to hunt are also the places that I just enjoy being in. I've always been drawn to the solitude of hunting in wild places. There's something appealing about being able to escape from reality. And I've always felt a sense of belonging in the wild. And I imagine that's why I feel like I can relate to these high country bucks who live solitary lives and spend most of the year hiding from everything and everyone in the wildest country they can find. We're just wrapping up at the end of our trip here, first county trip of the year. It was pretty successful. This morning we saw just a real dandy buck, a uh, nice five by six, uh, real tall, real wide. Pretty happy about that. And we saw some really nice bucks yesterday as well. We're gonna head home. Hopefully these bucks are around when we come back later this year, or if we come back later this year. It's not an exaggeration to say Curtis and I talk five days a week, and predictably, it's usually a conversation about hunting. I'm not sure a day goes by that we aren't plotting our next adventure together. Curtis and I were finally able to sync our schedules up to check out a new place neither of us had been to, but that had all the ingredients for big buck habitat. Seven o'clock, we were uh, supposed to leave the tent at four. Packed in last night, got in at like nine, and uh, supposed to be a 20% chance of showers today. And it's been raining since like 2 a.m. And it's still going pretty strong.
in this place especially you feel like nobody comes in here i mean we didn't we haven't seen a single boot track old new we haven't seen a single horse track nothing and we haven't seen any sign that uh a lot of know. people come in here Coming down the mountain right at dark, we ran into a herd of bulls that was um, pretty cool to see. I think there were like seven or eight bulls in the group, some really nice bulls, all in velvet. Uh, I don't know, they were like 75 yards away from us. We just sat there and watched them for a while. They were barking at us. Uh, eventually, we kind of got nervous and busted out of there, but it was a really cool way to end the day. This was a beautiful piece of country, but it just didn't have the bucks we were looking for. Curtis and I have been hunting, fishing, and getting into trouble together since we could walk. I think it's a miracle we survived sometimes, and now later in life we're still going on adventures together, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. In spite of our obsessive preparation, my insecurities always threaten to get the better of me. No matter how much scouting and work we put in, self-doubt still creeps in. It's the mountains that give me back my confidence. Okay, it's opening day. It's October 10th. Just before uh, first light here, we uh, hiked up about an hour and a half or something from camp this morning. Got up early, a little chilly, a little windy, but uh, I'm pretty excited about opening day. It's a beautiful day, a nice, gorgeous, cloudless sunrise happening right now. So I'm just gonna hang tight up here on this uh, peak and we're on. Do some glass on it and see what we see. After not seeing anything all morning, I found two bucks bedded down below a scree field in the shade of a tree. Um, we're pretty close to them, about probably about 170 yards, which one of them looks really nice, so I don't know what I'm gonna do yet though, so we'll see. And just like that, the moment I had visualized for months finally came to fruition. It was a bittersweet moment, realizing my hunt was over. While I was notching my tag, a few ridges away, Curtis had found the kind of buck most hunters dream about. Unfortunately, there wasn't a fairy tale ending for Curtis on this buck. Had a pretty good day. We found, I don't know, six or seven bucks, two of which were uh, really nice. I ended up shooting at one and was laying down facing away from us. I drilled the rock right in front of it. I did not see that coming. Didn't see the rock either. Curtis and I have a tradition of eating the deer heart first when we kill a deer. And Curtis loves deer heart. And after hearing about that heartbreaking story of him missing that big buck, I was happy to have it in camp. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. Is it? Definitely not done though. It's totally done. No. 
it's just a texture. The only reason that we're able to do this kind of hunt is because we have massive amounts of wild public land. Uh, we can just walk on a public land like we are now and we can go hunting. We have lots of options. And that's what makes um, you know, Idaho and much of the West so unique is that you can hunt big wild country at no expense. Sometimes you think they're always gonna be in this one drain, it's just one basin, and then all of a sudden they're not. You always think they're gonna be on that ridge or there's always gonna be a deer there, and then they're not. Sometimes there are, and you're right, and you feel like you know everything, and then you come back the next day, like the last couple of days we've hunted, we haven't seen deer in mm -hmm. two days, and you realize that you know we don't know anything about these animals or what drives them. We know a little bit, <laughs> but every time you think you know it all, they teach you a pretty humbling lesson, which is that, you know, we are not mule deer, nor do we understand how they operate fully. There's a certain amount of suffering involved in hunting in the backcountry, and the masochist in me enjoys the pain, partly because it makes success so much more rewarding, and partly because it helps me stay humble. It's uh, evening of day four. We're out in a totally different area earlier today, glassing, didn't see anything all day, a little frustrating, and uh, put on a lot of miles. It seems like the mountains here are either straight up or straight down. So we came back to camp, got a little more water, came out to a new spot we haven't been to before for the evening, and uh, a lot of the same. A lot of the same, not seeing much Nothing. today. <laughs> so, I don't know what we're gonna do, we're cold. I'm tired. There's a bond between brothers that's hard to describe. I'm fortunate to be able to share a passion like this with one of the people I'm closest to. I'd say it worked out really well. And the homework we put in and the time we put in, everything's paid off. It's just on my end, I haven't connected. You wish you would've shot one of those smaller bucks now? Nope. <laughs> yeah. Curtis would rather eat his tag than eat a two point. I know I can outsmart a smaller buck, and I know I can do that way closer to the truck, too. <laughs> After seven days of hunting and passing on several smaller bucks, Curtis and I spotted a buck on the sunny side of a rocky canyon. We're going to try and get up above him, swing down on top. The success of a hunt often comes down to a few important moments and choices. Curtis wasn't aware of it yet, but this would be his final opportunity. Once we got down in where that deer was, couldn't find him. He wasn't where we left him. Walking out of the mountains this year was bittersweet. I could feel Curtis's disappointment. Curtis never did find that big buck of his again. But the buck that gets away is always more appealing and bigger than the one you harvest. In the end, all we were left with is our memories, and all we can do is dream. <laughs>